All right, let's kick off this deep dive, um, and um, we're really going deep today into the mind of Dario Amode. He's the CEO of Amphropic. And we've got some choice excerpts from his Econ 102 podcast interview. And uh, this is not your typical, like, you know, tech CEO just hyping their company kind of talk. This is about the future of AI, its impact on business and national security, and whether it's going to lead to a world of radical abundance or maybe something else entirely. Yeah, what really struck me listening to this mm-hmm. is that Emma Day. Yeah. He doesn't just offer the usual platitude. You know, he, he draws some fascinating comparisons. Like he says that Google's role in AI is similar to Bell Labs' role in technology. You know, both were giants in innovation, but both of their structures sometimes hindered their ability to really capitalize on the breakthroughs they made. So even giants can stumble when the game changes. Huh? It makes you wonder, with Google and their focus on search, are they really built for the kind of seismic shifts AI is bringing? Yeah, exactly. I think Amade's point is being big doesn't automatically mean you'll win an AI. And that leads right into another one of his thought perverting ideas, that the economics of AI might actually lead to an oligopoly. He compares it to heavy industries like steel production, not something easily commoditized, like solar, steel. That's a surprising comparison. Help me understand, why does Amode see that connection? Well, think about what it actually takes to build large language models. Mm. You need massive data sets, serious computing power, and you need a whole lot of top tier talent. That creates a huge barrier to entry. Not every company can afford that gamble. So naturally, you end up with a handful of major players really dominating the field. So it's not just about having a brilliant idea. It's about having the resources to actually bring that idea to life. Mm. And that's where the Googles and Anthropics of the world have a distinct advantage. Right. It's a bit like the early days of the space race. You Mm -hmm. know, it took a nation state level of investment to really compete. Okay, so maybe not everyone is going to be building the next chat GPT, but that doesn't mean that the AI revolution stops there. Amade talks about this concept called the scaling hypothesis. And to me, that's where things get really mind blowing. He's basically suggesting that as these AI models get bigger and more complex, their capabilities are going to just explode exponentially. Imagine AI designing groundbreaking new medicines, writing code that's more elegant and more efficient than anything humans can create. Yeah. And maybe even tackling climate change in ways we haven't even thought of yet. I mean, that's the kind of transformative potential oh. Amodi is talking about. It's both incredibly exciting and a little bit unnerving to imagine a world where AI is that capable. But hold on. If AI is about to become this powerful, doesn't that mean that all of our jobs are on the chopping block? Are we all just going to be replaced by robots? You know, I think Amode really pushes back against that simplistic robots are going to replace humans. In that narrative, it's not about one-to-one replacement. It's about how AI can fundamentally reshape yeah. how we work and the skills that we need to thrive. So instead of feeling obsolescence, we should be thinking about how to adapt and how to leverage AI to our advantage. But how does that actually play out in the real world? How does this impact someone listening to this right now in their job, in their career. Think of it as AI augmenting human capabilities. Yeah. Yeah, sure, some tasks will be automated, but new roles will emerge. And those new roles will require creativity, they'll require critical thinking, and the ability to work alongside these AI systems. So adaptability and continuous learning become even more crucial. So it's almost like AI is gonna compress the skills gap. Imagine someone who maybe struggled with writing. They're suddenly able to create compelling content with the help of AI tools, that could change their entire career trajectory. Exactly. And that brings us to another point that Amode raises, which is the potential impact on income inequality. He suggests that AI, by empowering lower skilled workers, could actually lead to a more equitable distribution of wealth. Now, that's a bold claim. It's like thinking about the Industrial Revolution, where machines allowed people who weren't master craftsmen to produce high quality goods. It kind of leveled the playing field in a way. It's an interesting parallel. But as with any major technological shift, Mm. there's a lot of uncertainty about the long-term effects. Mm -hmm. You know, there are potential downsides, too. And Amadei doesn't shy away from those. Okay, so what kind of downsides are we talking about? I'm guessing this is where things get a little less utopian. Well, one of Amadei's biggest concerns is the potential for AI to disrupt the balance of power on a global scale. He's particularly worried about an AI arms race with nations vying to develop and deploy increasingly sophisticated AI systems for military purposes. It's like an AI-powered chess match. But the stakes are terrifyingly real. We're already seeing geopolitical tensions around the world. AI could easily become a new flashpoint. Right. And this is where the need for international cooperation Mm -hmm. and responsible development becomes so critical. Amade stresses 
then we can't just focus on building powerful AI. We need to be equally focused mm -hmm. on building it safely and ethically. You know, on that note, I want to bring up a question that keeps popping into my head. We've talked a lot about aligning AI with human values, but what about the values of other species? You know, in a world of super intelligent AI, how do we ensure that the rabbits, the yeah. dolphins, the entire ecosystem aren't left behind? It's a fascinating question. And I think often overlooked, I think Amade acknowledges that we have an ethical responsibility to consider the well being mm. of all living things. As we develop AI, the challenge is how to design systems mm -hmm. that value not just human intelligence, mm. but the interconnectedness of all life. Now, that's a future worth striving for. But it sounds like we've got a lot to figure out before we get there. We do. But Amode's insights provide a valuable starting point for navigating the complexities mm. of this new AI powered world. He's both optimistic and cautious reminding us that the choices that we make today will shape the future for generations to come. This has been an incredible journey so far, and we're just getting started. When we come back, we'll continue our deep dive into Amade's thoughts, exploring the risks and rewards of this transformative technology in even greater detail. Yep. Welcome back. You know, as we delve deeper into Amade's perspective, I'm really struck by how balanced his view of AI is. He's clearly excited about the potential, but also incredibly aware of the risks. It's refreshing to hear someone talk about this technology with such nuance. Yeah, it really is. And one thing that really stood out to me is how Amode differentiates between the hypothetical risk of super intelligent AI mm -hmm. and the more immediate and arguably more insidious dangers of AI misuse. He calls it the misuse problem, right? So we're not talking about Skynet becoming self-aware yeah. and launching nukes. It's about how people could exploit AI for harmful purposes right now. Exactly. Think about AI-powered disinformation campaigns spreading like wildfire, hyper-personalized propaganda that manipulates people's beliefs, mm. or even autonomous weapons making life or death decisions without human oversight. That's a sobering thought. It's almost like we're giving incredibly powerful tools to people who might not fully grasp the potential consequences. And that's why Amode really stresses the importance of responsible AI development. He advocates for robust testing, clear ethical guidelines, and even international cooperation to make sure that AI is used for good, not for harm. It makes you think about how we handle other potentially dangerous technologies, like nuclear weapons. There are strict protocols and safeguards in place for a reason. Should we be thinking about AI in a similar way? That's a critical question. You know, Amade argues that we can't just focus on building powerful AI. We need to prioritize safety and ethics mm. right from the very beginning. But even if we manage to prevent intentional misuse, there's still the risk that these AI systems could become so complex mm. that they develop unpredictable and potentially dangerous autonomous behaviors. Is that what he refers to? as the alignment problem? That's one aspect of it. The alignment problem is about ensuring mm -hmm. that AI systems, even as they become increasingly sophisticated, remain aligned with human values and goals. So we need to be careful about what we're asking AI to do and how we're designing its objectives. It's like the old saying, be careful what you wish for. Exactly. You know, Amade uses this thought experiment about a super intelligent AI program to maximize paperclip production. And if we're not careful about defining its goals, it might decide that the best way to do that is to turn the entire planet into a giant paperclip factory. Okay, so we've talked about some pretty serious risks here, but let's not forget the incredible potential of AI to solve some of humanity's biggest challenges. Amode calls this the possibility of radical abundance. What does that world look like to you? Imagine AI helping us develop personalized cures for diseases, create sustainable energy sources, that power our homes and our cities, and even reverse the effects of climate change. I mean, that's the kind of future yeah. Amade believes is possible if we can harness AI's power responsibly. It's a future that's hard not to get excited about, but even in that optimistic vision, there's a critical question. How do we ensure that everyone benefits from this abundance? Will the gains be shared fairly, or will they be concentrated in the hands of a few? Yeah, that's the billion dollar question. You know, Amade acknowledges that AI could exacerbate existing inequalities if we're not oh. careful. He argues that we need to be thinking about equitable access to AI education and training, as well as policies yeah. that ensure that the economic benefits are shared widely. It's like we need to make sure that everyone has a seat at the table as AI reshapes the economy. Exactly. And this brings us to another thorny issue that Amadei addresses, the role of government regulation 
in the development and deployment of AI. Regulation is always such a contentious topic, especially when it comes to rapidly evolving technologies. I'm curious to hear what Amode's take is on this. Well, he discusses this specific piece of legislation in California, SB Dorno 47, which aimed to regulate AI by requiring companies to conduct rigorous safety testing and disclose their plans for mitigating risks. So it's like a safety inspection for AI systems yeah. before they're released into the wild. In a way, yes. But as you might expect, this bill sparked a lot of debate. Some argued it was too heavy-handed, he potentially good. stifling innovation, yeah. and giving regulators too much control over a technology that they might not fully understand. It's that classic tension between the need for safeguards and the fear of overregulation hindering progress. So where did Emode and Anthropic stand on this issue? Well, they took a proactive approach, engaging in the legislative process, providing feedback on the bill, and advocating for changes that they believed would strike a better balance between safety and innovation. So they didn't just complain from the sidelines. They actually tried to shape the conversation. Exactly. And in the end, Anthropic ended up supporting the revised version of the bill, hmm. seeing it as a reasonable framework for regulating AI yeah. without stifling progress. That's encouraging. It shows that it's possible to find some common ground, even on such a complex issue. But even with regulations in place, how do we actually ensure that they're enforced? Yeah. Especially in a globalized world where AI development is happening everywhere. That's yeah. a huge challenge. You know, Amode highlights the difficulty of international cooperation on AI regulation, stressing the need for ongoing dialogue and collaboration to establish shared norms and standards. It's like trying to herd cats. Yeah. Every country has its own interests yeah. and its own priorities, making it tough to get everyone on the same page. And that's just nations. How do you even begin to regulate individual actors who might be developing AI? It's a multifaceted problem. But Amode emphasizes that we can't afford to ignore this challenge. The potential consequences of unchecked AI development are just too great. We need to find ways to work together to make sure that AI is developed responsibly, no matter who's mm -hmm. building it or where. It sounds like we need a global conversation about AI, some kind of like digital Geneva convention that sets ethical guidelines and safety standards for everyone. That's an interesting analogy. Mm -hmm. And it really highlights the scale of the challenge that we're facing. AI is a technology with the potential to reshape the world as we know it. And we need to be prepared for the implications, both positive and negative. This deep dive into Emma Day's thoughts has really opened my eyes to the complexities of this new AI-powered world. It's clear we're on the cusp of something truly transformative, but it's up to us to make sure that transformation is for the better. I agree. I think Emma Day's perspective is both inspiring and cautionary. He's calling for a shift in mindset, urging us to move beyond the simple framing of AI as a job killer or a tool for automation. He wants us to see it as this powerful force yeah. that can fundamentally reshape our world. He's challenging us to be active participants in shaping the future of AI, not passive bystanders. Mm -hmm. It's a daunting task, but also incredibly exciting. But how do we even begin to do that? I'm not a computer scientist. I'm not a policymaker. What can someone like me do to make a difference? Yeah, that's the question that's on my mind, too. You know, I'm feeling this mix of excitement and apprehension about this whole AI powered future. But I'm also wondering, like, what can I actually do mm. to make sure it's a future that we all want to live in? It's easy to feel overwhelmed by all of this. But I think Amade's message is ultimately one of empowerment. You don't have to be a tech genius or a politician to shape the future of AI. It starts with awareness, you know, educating yourself about the technology, its potential and its risks. So being informed citizens, yeah. not just passive consumers of technology. Yeah, exactly. Engage in conversations about AI ethics. Read articles and books on the topic. Yeah. And support organizations that are advocating for responsible AI development. The mm -hmm. more informed we are as individuals, the better equipped we'll be to it? make wise choices about how we develop and use AI. It's almost like we need a collective upgrade in our AI literacy as a society. We need to be able to understand the implications of this technology, ask critical questions, and hold those in power accountable for developing and using it responsibly. Absolutely. It's about fostering a culture of critical thinking hmm. and engagement around AI. And remember, this isn't just about experts and policymakers. It's about all of us as individuals, uh -huh. as communities, and as nations working together to shape a future where AI benefits all of humanity. That's a powerful message. It's a reminder that the future isn't something that just happens to us. It's something we create mm. through our actions. Yeah 
through our choices yeah. and the values that we embrace. Exactly. You know, this deep dive into Amade's thoughts mm -hmm. has been a fascinating exploration mm -hmm. of the possibilities and the perils that lie ahead. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a call to action for all of us to engage in this critical conversation mm -hmm. and to help guide the development of AI in a direction that benefits everyone. I think that's the perfect note to end on. This conversation has been insightful. It's been challenging. And ultimately, I think hopeful. It's a reminder that we're not powerless in the face of this technological revolution, we all have a role to play in shaping the future of AI and ensuring that it's a future where humanity thrives. Well said. The future of AI is in our hands. Let's make sure we create a future worth inheriting. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive into the world of AI. We'll continue to explore these complex and fascinating topics <laughs> in future episodes. Until then, keep learning, keep questioning. And keep shaping the future. Oh.